This airport in the Cotswolds is home to dozens of gas-guzzling planes grounded by the pandemic. Some will never return to service, others will soon be back in the sky burning fossil fuels again. But in a nearby hangar, the search for a greener way of flying is underway. This hydrogen plane could be taking paying passengers within three years. The technology we've got today works, so there's no reason why you have to wait to 2030, 2040, 2050. Zero Avia's first attempt, a six-seater hydrogen fuel cell plane, was considered a huge success until it crashed. Backed by the UK government, the aviation firm says it's learnt from the accident and is now preparing to install hydrogen gas tanks in this regional airliner. So it's recombining hydrogen and oxygen together to produce a DC current and the only byproduct is water. The fuel's produced on site through electrolysis. And you just fuel the plane up with this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But to be truly carbon zero, that process of splitting hydrogen and oxygen from water needs to be driven by renewable power. In Australia, with all the solar resources, uh, there can be quite a bit of, uh, uh, of uh, renewable power generation generated very close to the airports. Once converted, this 19-seater should have a range of about 500 nautical miles. So technically speaking, you could get from Sydney to Melbourne. And in as little as five years, this project's hoping to have a commercially viable 90-seater aircraft in the sky. One of the world's biggest aircraft manufacturers, Airbus, is planning to burn hydrogen in its future planes, but not until 2035 at the earliest. In the meantime, experts say there should be more investment in existing solutions, like e-kerosene, a cleaner synthetic fuel which has already been successfully tested. That's the only solution that we have in the next decade to decarbonise those flights. This team's betting their solution will get off the ground it sounds easy, but it isn't. <laughs> Climate-conscious travellers can only hope they succeed. Nick Dole, ABC News, Kemble.